Right, so it's a fairly quick update today in um, this ongoing build of a 16mm scale Hudson Hunslet diesel locomotive. Um, I'd intended, or hoped, as we mentioned in the previous video, to have a, uh, a model running on the track again today. Um, the, the updated version. As you can see, that's not quite happened. Um, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute as to why. Uh, but first, let's have a look at this uh, footwell, which was the, the kind of problem we had in in the video last time. Um, so as you can see I've now kind of glued this bottom piece on um, as well as the buffer beam and opened out the hole in the top. So this now gives us um, a complete footwell in the right place prototypically up to this this back buffer beam um, <clears throat> and that seems seems all pretty good. Um, I mean I could probably spend a bit more time um, smoothing these edges they're not they're not perfect but not far off um, and it cut out nice and easily. I basically, I kind of used a saw to get through the large um, piece at the edge, um, and then some um, some snips to kind of cut most of this out. Um, it was a bit difficult getting a, a knife in easily, but the, the snips worked well. And then um, files to to go around the rest, a, a flat file for the edges, and I used a, a round file for these these corners just to kind of make them nice and round against the the kind of inside surface. Um, and then I just kind of gently chamfered the top surface a little. I could probably do this a bit more um, on the prototype photos. It seems to it seems to roll quite nicely. I could do that a bit further, but at the moment it's uh, it's okay. Um, and I think that works. I think that works quite nicely. Um, proof, of course, is the fact that the figure I want to use um, his feet do fit in the footwell. Um, so as you can see. Um, he fits fits nicely. Uh, when he's actually all the way to the bottom of the footwell, um, he's quite low down. There's not really much space uh, for the seat underneath him. So I think in in reality he'll probably be kind of up here with his feet kind of in the footwell, but not all to the way to the bottom, which is fine. Um, as I say, I'm still not entirely sure how I'm going to do the attachment for the seat yet. It'll probably move around a bit. So depending on what figure you want to use, you can position it exactly perfectly. Uh, and obviously. On this one, there's some extra um, casting bits and pieces around his feet, so I'll tidy those up, uh, and that'll probably give me a bit more leeway on exactly how I position him in the seat when we get there. Um, so yeah, so that's all. That's all gone quite nicely. So um, that leaves the question of why isn't this sat on a piece of track running around around in circles? Well, um, I fitted the motor; that went nicely, uh, no problems, and it meshes nicely with the gear, um, so that's fine. But um, and it's, it's it's not as easy to see on here in the light, but if you can see here, there's some scratches in the in the resin, um, and it's also on this one and this one. Essentially, the edge of the wheel, um, the plastic wheels I've been using for testing, are catching on the bottom um, when when they're um, on the axle, and it's a bit tight. Now, I'm not quite sure um, why this is the case. As far as I can tell. When I merged the power, the kind of motor buggy piece in with the foot plate, um, those that dimension didn't change. So I'm wondering whether it was just that because, as we said with that motor buggy, it would it had bowed during printing and it didn't have such a big plate. There was only a tiny little lip. Um, so I think probably what's happening was there was just there was that little bit more clearance, and obviously it wasn't as wide. So um, with the wheels at their kind of maximum gauge, they were probably ever so slightly clearing the edge of the piece I printed and giving it just enough, just enough clearance. So I think what I'll do on the next print, rather than moving, uh, rather than moving the wheels kind of downwards, uh, which will put them out of position compared with the axle boxes and the prototype, um, I think what I'll do is put a slight recess um into all four wheels um kind of a semi-circular depression it won't have to be very big um but that should be enough to just clear these i mean it's 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 fractional i can turn it with my fingers which is why there are scratches um but obviously it's gonna it's gonna stick under under power um i did know that i might have a I might have a problem here anyway because as well as the plastic wheels that i've been using i have some replacement uh, wheel sets that are, are steel. Now, these are notionally the same size, and if we if we look at one, they are 
pretty much the same same size. The metal one is a slightly nicer uh, profile, but they're they're basically they're basically the same. Um, the metal one is, however, ever so slightly, ever so slightly bigger. Um, if you measure it, you can kind of you can't really feel it very much with your fingers. Um, but if you measure them really accurately across the the out edge of the flange, it's ever so slightly bigger. Um, so I did wonder whether these were going to catch on the plastic print. Um, so if the plastic ones are catching, the metal ones definitely will. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, re a slight recess uh, for all four wheels, uh, and that should allow um, them to run nicely while not having to move anything else. Because I mean, otherwise I could drop the wheels down slightly which would lift the buffer beams up off the track a little, which isn't a terrible idea. Um, but it would mean having to move the axle boxes down to match, and they're already quite um, quite low down. Um, on the prototype, they, they do fit kind of quite low down to this central central section. Um, if I move them down much further, they're, gonna, they're not going to fit. So I think the best thing to do is just assume that the flanges on these wheels are... Um, over scale compared with the prototype. I mean, these are quite big. They're quite big flanges. So I think, um, so I think, yeah. What I'm going to do is is just assume that the wheel's in the right place. That there would be really little clearance on the prototype, and the oversized flange is what's the problem. So I'm just going to kind of, um, as I say, put a small, small semicircular dint in behind each of these wheels to take care of it. And hopefully, with the way it prints, the it will. Um, the dint will appear slowly as over the layers rather than all at once like it did with the hole for the footwell so hopefully that shouldn't cause um the tension to pull off in any way um so it should print it should print nicely um we'll have to see but hopefully that won't affect the rest of the the footplate print now i've sorted this footwell um so i'm gonna have to print all this again um before i can get one on the track um it's not a terrible pod problem um, partly because at least it gives me a second chance to test that this footwell solution does print reliably so far I've only printed this this version once um, so a second a second print isn't a bad idea um, so yeah that will probably be after the weekend now so a few days before I, I get around to that but, um, but yeah it's all it's all looking promising and this this one goes together quite nicely so as you see I've glued the buffer beams on but the the radiator piece now fits in fits in nicely no problems there the print for the back for the back of the engine bay has uh, two two pins and now has this cutout for the motor so that fits um, quite nicely has no problem um, just kind of pushes in it's, it's a nice tight fit which obviously when when glued in uh, will be nice and secure and then the top of the kind of motor area slots on as it did before um, so that's all that's all working nicely still so um, yeah I just have to fix these two two pieces um, and this time what I'll do is I'll probably deal with the the mounting for the coupling blocks at the same time so that when I print the replacement buffer beams this time um, I can I can deal with the the coupling blocks as well uh, I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to attach those yet because of whichever orientation I need to print them in um, so yeah we'll, we'll have to see how that see how that goes uh, but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a huge issue um, so yeah so that's that's where we are uh, not quite where I wanted to be but I think we've at least proved that this foot footwell works nicely um, so yeah next step hopefully as I say is another another working model uh, with a with a with the footwell in place and, and all the wheels wheels clearing um, but yeah that'll be that'll be a few days now until I can get around to printing some more parts <laughs> 